this year's Sotheby's Hong Kong auction that kicked off this past weekend is estimated to have raised 167 million US dollars. No better person to give insights than Sotheby's president and CEO Bill Ruprecht. The company is the only auction house to have auction works in excess of 100 million US dollars. It also it is also the only one that's publicly listed. Bill, good to have you with us. It does seem like the crisis is over. The, rec the recession is O-V-E-R. Well, um, I think that's a fair statement. Our business reflects global wealth and global wealth creation and a confidence in the future. And we're seeing prices and demand in our business unlike anything we've seen certainly in the last 18 months. How's it looking, though, in Asia if you compare it to the U.S. and Europe? First half of last year was tough. Uh, second half of last year, we doubled our first half sales in Asia. And now in the first quarter of 2010, we'll be seeing even more growth than we saw in the second half of 2009. We talk about prices for uh, pieces. What kind of prices are people going for? I mean, they must be going for the huge ones in excess of what, $100 million? Well, there aren't so many over $100 million things. If there are, please call me. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think it's fair to say that people love jewelry, people love Chinese works of art in this part of the world, but increasingly, people in this part of the world like Western art as well, Impressionist art and contemporary art, not just from this part of the world, but from global uh, marketplaces and, and from sources everywhere. What? So in terms of demand, it's China. Is China driving that demand? China is an important part of our business, an incredibly important part of our business, and wealth there is growing very quickly, and our customers are growing very quickly, as are their purchases. But really, we're a global business, and we have global demand in each one of the markets that we have. So operate. you're seeing, what, interest, appetite across the board in all Asian markets? In all Asian markets, clearly here at the... Uh, uh, front row um, outside China uh, proper, we are uh, in a very fortunate position. We've been here for over 35 years, and the growth and the interest we're seeing right now is pretty explosive. So that should translate to better numbers uh, for your company. I know that, you know, 2009 was a pretty uh, slow year for you. You had a loss of $6.5 million. How's it looking? Uh, are you up lot, What kind of growth? What kind of numbers? Uh, clearly, last year is not a place from, from which uh, we, we'd like to... Uh, be particularly proud of, but it's very easy to beat those numbers. Um, I think we're seeing in the first quarter of this year, we've already seen in 2010 versus 2009, sales growth of over 100% versus last year. So we're looking at, on a global basis, very significant increases in demand and enormous interest in our business. So no need for cost-cutting measures anymore. I mean, you cut workers, you also cut uh, pension contributions. Uh, will that be we restored? Cut, we cut almost 30% of the costs of, out of our business on a global basis. When you've done that and you continue to stay focused on um, being prudent about costs and you see the kind of revenue growth that we're seeing, um, that's the reason our business has uh, grown in market capitalization and you know, our, our equity is trading up about 400% from where it was a year ago at this time. It's going to be hard to maintain shareholder value. So what's the plan? What's your growth strategy in this part of the world, at least? You know, Unilever's CEO the other day started talking about shareholder value, and short-term shareholder value is probably not something or other that I spend an enormous amount of time thinking about. Our business has got to focus on our customers over 10, 20, 50-year cycles. Um, if we focus on taking care of our customers and manage our costs, I think we can deliver really okay, so, great results. So you talk about those 10, 50-year cycles. So how are you preparing for that? I mean, in terms of expansion... We have to focus on the markets which drive our uh, demand and we have to focus on building people and skills within our organization who can build and sustain and invest in those relationships with the clients that drive our business. We're a pretty small organization in terms of the numbers of transactions we do. And each transaction is important to us and we have to think very long term about our clients. These are uncertain times though, right, given where Europe is at this point in time. Uh, the U.S., the recovery is uncertain. What are the biggest risks you see out there for your business? I think we're at the beginning of a virtuous cycle as opposed to a series of great turbulences in the future. I think the U.S. appears to be growing confident about its future. That, in turn, will drive demand and exports out of Asia. So I think we're probably going to see a positive growth and wealth creation cycle in both marketplaces. Okay, in terms of, tre in terms of trend, uh, what trends do you see developing in the next few years, 2010 in particular? I think people are focused on very high value and very high quality works of art. You know, once you've had enough handbags and you've bought a, enough uh, um, sort of small delights and, and, and pleasures, people look for enduring value. And some of the things that we have to sell really get people excited and they get very passionate in the auction room. Such as? Chinese paintings. 
blue diamond. We're selling a blue diamond uh, uh, in the next 24 hours that I think will bring over 50 million Hong Kong. And you didn't bring the blue diamond here into the studio? Well, for you this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Rupert, thank you so much for joining us today.